maybe you've heard of HubSpot, but you're not quite sure how to use HubSpot to do marketing. Well, if that's you, we're gonna dive into that in this video. Welcome to HubSpot Hacks, where we help you get more out of HubSpot. So whether you're new to marketing or new to HubSpot, both of those are loaded questions. HubSpot is a very powerful platform that you can do a lot of things from sales to marketing to service to operations. But then marketing is a very loaded word. A lot of things, a lot of people don't really know what's encompassing in marketing. So we're gonna talk about what it means to do marketing in HubSpot in this video. So before we dive in, what I wanna talk about first is the way that we now look at marketing from how a company attracts customers, nurtures those customers, and converts them into sales, ultimately then hopefully growing your business on a flywheel. So we're gonna look at here this flywheel that HubSpot uses to teach everybody that uses their platform about how they believe marketing works. And here at Simple Strat, the company behind this video series, we do believe in the flywheel, and it's true. If you have a bad experience, you then tell people about it and the flywheel stops. Same thing with a good experience. So as we hear, see here on the screen, what we might have seen in before would have been a funnel, but actually if you think about a funnel from top to bottom, what we did here is just simply smash that funnel down so that it's a circle. You're looking at it almost from the top into the funnel here. So we've got the ability for us to attract strangers. Now strangers are people that have not heard of your brand, they haven't heard of your company, they might be problem unaware, they're just not actually in the funnel just yet. And then as we move from strangers into prospects, these are people that have raised their hand and said, yes, perhaps you can solve my problem, whether that's a service or a product, I'm interested in hearing more about what you have to say, and so they're engaging. And then once you move from the engage to the delight stage, yes, in fact, your solution, your problem matches with what I'm looking for, and so we move into the customer journey part, and there we have to delight them with a really great experience, otherwise, then that flywheel again is gonna stop. So once we delight those folks, they become promoters, tell more people about your product, and ultimately that's what powers growth. Now where this marries with HubSpot is there are a variety of tools inside of the HubSpot platform that make it possible for you to power this flywheel. But mostly when people think about HubSpot and marketing, they tend to think about these strangers and prospects. A lot of times they think about just strangers because prospects usually involves some sort of sales interaction with a sales team. For the purposes of this video, we're gonna talk just about using HubSpot for these strangers or attracting people and managing to get them further along in your process so they might be a sales qualified. So in a nutshell, what HubSpot does for marketing is it allows you to engage contacts, you send promotional offers to them or nurture them and send news and relevant updates to your contacts. Really that's it in a nutshell. What that means though is people are coming from all different places online, in person, ultimately to end up in your database. So let's take a look at the marketing tools and we're gonna talk through what this means to operate your marketing function inside of the HubSpot platform. All right, so the first place we're gonna start here is we're gonna start with landing pages. And right now you're actually looking at landing pages that are in our portal at SimpleStrat. Now the reason I start with landing pages is one of the core tenets of marketing is the ability for you to convert someone who happens to be a stranger into your database in order for them to learn more about your company. So this exists a lot of times outside of HubSpot and it's all about bringing people into the place where they can convert again on a landing page. And a landing page usually has a form. Now, if you think about this, there's a lot of different places that people can convert across the internet. And just to give you a few, we have a video about lead tracking. If you wanna know about all the different sources that exist in marketing, watch that video. But in a nutshell, you're either gonna have people searching for your solution, so that might be Google or YouTube or TikTok in this case in modern day. Um, you have people that are already knowing that they're looking for a vendor, so they go to the website and they go to a specific area to ask for a demo, that's called direct traffic. You might have people that found you on social, they saw an ad or they saw something that was interesting in their feed, they decided to quote unquote convert and then ultimately end up in your database. There might be folks that are getting referred. So maybe someone emailed them or texted them a link to something and they decided to actually take a next step and explore that company. That is really the crux of today's modern marketing is all of these little paths that are leading people back to your company, but they're all at different points in their journey. So the ability for you to have different landing pages for different functions is going to be paramount. Two of the biggest pieces you're probably gonna see in HubSpot when you use them is gonna be landing pages and forms. And if you use those two effectively, you'd be able to capture people for an event, or you might capture folks that are for a webinar or downloading a guide. Again, think about the possibilities here. They really are endless, but your marketing has to be tied to the pains that your customers have 
or the aspirations and then encouraging them to take a next step. This is one of the core tenets of HubSpot is the ability to take landing pages, make them spin them up very quickly. As you can see here, if I wanted to clone this page, I'm simply gonna clone this and then I could actually just replace a couple things, toss up a new landing page, and now I've got all of my marketing in one place. Okay, so landing pages are huge. The other piece that HubSpot has built into it is gonna be the ability to capture ads. So you can set up and run ads right through the HubSpot platform on platforms such as LinkedIn and Facebook and Google. That means that if someone, if you're running ads out where someone types in something in Google, they can convert into HubSpot. If you're running an ad on LinkedIn and they convert, they go into your HubSpot. Same thing with Facebook, all of that's pulling it into one place. And then you can look at the source data and then nurture those folks depending on what type of content they converted on. So as we look at here, we don't have any campaigns running at the moment, but if we did, we'd see the different types of uh, results that are showing up in our database here. And then we'd also be able to see what context converted and we could have a separate nurturing journey for each one, depending on the type of content or even problem statements that we put in front of them. Now the next piece is gonna be the marketing emails. And marketing emails is what we used to think of as like we're gonna get into an email marketing program and we're gonna blast a message out to our customers. Now if that's the language you're still using, let me put you in pause there because now we're in an environment where everybody wants a customized message and not because they want personalization. So the high first name, that's not personalization. What people want is contextual relevance. So if I get an email about something I interacted with or a product that I looked at on a website, that's much more relevant than an email about all of the products on the website. So in HubSpot, one of the best things you can do is understand more about your contacts and then segment them using specific properties or characteristics so you can send the right message to the right customer at the right time. And this goes even farther beyond customers. You might send everybody who's attended a trade show last year. You then send an email the next year hey, we missed you at XYZ a conference last year. We're gonna be there next year. Come have a coffee on us at our booth. All of this, again, highly relevant. You wouldn't send that to people who didn't attend the conference last year. All of that is not something that's captured in your brain. And as we've learned over the years, so many people have lots and lots and lots of different spreadsheets. This is bringing it all in one place so you can manage that and then learn more about those contacts so you can send relevant emails to them at the right time. The other thing with these emails is there's various types of emails. We can do A-B testing. You can find out what emails work. You can do emails to nurture someone along a path. So let's say they went to your trade show, they got the coffee, they didn't really engage in a conversation. You might choose to send a couple of messages to them afterward to encourage them to watch your video series. So all of these things, again, are really built into the HubSpot platform. You can use workflows to make it so that they get the right message at the right time based on the information that is in your HubSpot portal. So that's gonna be marketing uh, information here. Now social, this is gonna be, as I mentioned before, if someone sees your information online and they convert, I will tell you based on our social networks, LinkedIn is a huge platform for us. As you can see, when we analyze this here, our audience on LinkedIn is much higher and our conversions, if we look at our interactions and our shares, our LinkedIn company page gets a lot more interaction. We get a lot more interaction here. And then actually the clicks, a lot of our clicks come from Twitter. Very interesting, but we're pushing all of this through the HubSpot platform so that we can actually look at what posts are resonating, what's converting. And then in this case, we've been using LinkedIn for a webinar series Hey everybody, we're doing this webinar on XYZ. Come join us when they register, they come into our HubSpot portal, we then send them follow-up emails, they attend the webinar and we can market to them after that. So again, we're capturing those folks, capturing the people that were the strangers, bringing them into our database and then nurturing those relationships through additional marketing activities. So that's gonna be your social piece. Now, another core tenant of HubSpot is going to be the blog. Now, you might have a blog on your website, but one of the things that HubSpot did when it first started as a company is it realized that sometimes websites and blogs were not set up so that it had this really valuable experience to kind of get yourself in a rabbit hole and stay there for a long time. If you think about the way people interact with content these days, we don't want to wait for the next thing. You and I both watch Netflix and we're so excited for binging an entire series. That is the habit that exists today when people wanna find out information or they wanna go deeper on a specific topic. So when you use the blog function in HubSpot, you can actually design your experience so that you link from page to page. There's calls to action inside of those blog posts. So if it happens to be relevant to them, let's say they're reading a blog post about how to do marketing in HubSpot. And inside of that blog post is a call to action component that says, 
Get your guide to marketing in HubSpot, download it, and in an hour, you can have a plan of your own. That would be a way to convert someone who maybe had found themselves in a rabbit hole by reading a lot of our content. So blogs are gonna be a huge piece on the HubSpot platform. We can actually then see what blogs are performing well. We can see what the interaction looks like. All of that, again, in one place. We're not trying to stitch together multiple platforms here inside of HubSpot. Now, the next piece, this SEO component, so I'm gonna go back to the way that we get strangers inside of our HubSpot portal. That's gonna be, if someone types in something in a search engine, this is changing as we record this video thanks to AI, but still relevant today when someone goes looking for a specific company or a keyword based on a problem or aspiration, they're gonna find a list of results. So here we're gonna actually track what types of results we're seeing online. We're gonna track what keywords we're showing up for and how that relates to the content on our blog pages. So in a nutshell, you wanna make sure that you're being seen on those search engine result pages for the things that your customers are looking for or your prospects are looking for. And in this case, we can track all of that inside of your HubSpot platform. Now, the last two pieces, I mentioned these as part of our overall landing pages, website pages, blog, but we have forms and calls to action. So here, if you look at the variety of forms we have here, we actually can measure how effective those forms are. And if you look at our forms, one thing I wanna give you a little peek behind the curtain here is we've actually got a form for our webinars and when I dig into this, you'll notice that the types of questions that you ask on your forms will help you market better and more effectively to your audience. So here we've got one specific field that says, what do you hope to learn in this webinar? Now, I love this field because when people fill this out, you know what they're doing? They're giving us, or actually we're, we're really just asking for permission. This is an optional field. What do you wanna learn? So we can make sure that we're tailoring our content to the needs of that audience, but also it tells me a lot more about the pains in their business, which then helps us when we're following up with services that are relevant to help them overcome those challenges inside of their organization. So this is gonna be forums. You can add numerous things to these forums, but best practices are going to be probably no more than about five or six fields. The less fields, the higher conversion, the more fields, the better qualification. Those are kind of the two things to keep in mind. Now CTAs, these are things where we actually can then offer a relevant next step. So think about back to that rabbit hole. If you're on the rabbit hole, how do I get you out of that rabbit hole to a place where you might be able to talk to our company? A very specific and relevant call to action. So if you've read a bunch of blog posts about HubSpot, you're not yet a customer, a relevant call to action might be a demo, or it might be our guide, 10 things you should know before you buy HubSpot. See how that works? So calls to action are gonna be one of the most important pieces inside of HubSpot that you can use to power your marketing. Now, two last pieces, the campaigns tool will actually show us, so we've got a variety of campaigns set up here, and it will actually show us how the campaigns are performing and what types of revenue it's driving for us. So you'll see that we have this new campaign and we've actually got about 1700 sessions from this specific campaign. We've got 240 new contacts that have been created as a result of our webinar series. So again, we took them from strangers, now they're on the prospect stage, and we have 240 of them. All together, we've influenced over 1,600 folks in our webinar series as we nurture them along toward a sales conversation. Now the workflows, this is gonna be the piece that powers all of this together and makes the, if this happens, then do this, really happen inside of HubSpot. So if someone comes through on this page, send them this email. But if they happen to be our prospect versus a customer, do this instead. So you can let the system do the thinking and the sorting for you based on the parameters that you set, which again means you need to figure out how you want to do marketing to attract your audience into your organization. And then this becomes your most important engine in getting those folks to the right place and nurturing them into a sales conversation. So that was a lot, but that is how marketing in HubSpot works. So to get started, one of the first things I would encourage you to do is think about one, where do your customers come from today? If you happen to be watching this video and you're using HubSpot for the first time, there's a good chance your customers may be coming from referral or let's say in-person type of events. I know a lot of, let's say financial planners, for example, generate a lot of their business that way. But if you take a step back and say, if someone didn't know who I was, what would they go looking for? How would they go about solving this problem? And then for your audience, those are the places that you would need to be in order to attract that back to your company. 
those roads and those conversion paths are what you would build using HubSpot and then ultimately get those people into your database and nurture using the functions that I just talked about in this video. Now, that might sound easier said than done. That's what we do for a living here. That's what I've done for my whole career, so that's straightforward. But if you need some help with that, feel free to hit the links in the description and we can help you out. So I hope that's been helpful. That is how you do marketing in HubSpot. If you have any questions, feel free to drop us a comment, hit that subscribe link for more tips, tricks, and how-tos, and we'll see you next week.